Good afternoon for everybody. This is Bea Williams. I'm with Ben Kinney Companies. This is our agent training webinar that we do every single Wednesday at noon Pacific time. And as you guys know, these are designed for agents to give on, like just practical, tactical advice that you can use right away. My goal for these webinars is that you can take one to three things after every webinar and use it within an hour. Right? That's kind of how I, I think of these. So these are people that typically are in the trenches selling real estate every day. And today is no exception. We have two phenomenal guests that I can't wait to introduce. With that said, next week, I, I've got two weeks in a row of, um, uh, of really special guests. Next week, we've got Mike McCann. I've wanted to interview Mike McCann for a long time. And for, for you guys who don't know him, Mike McCann is a top 15 team in the nation. Uh, he's out of... Uh, Philadelphia. And uh, I think last I looked, they do eight to 900 units and sides. And I, I've been wanting to uh, get my hands on him and interview him for a long time. So I'm really excited to have that. And then uh, two weeks from today, the band is back together. Again. Um, we got Ben Kinney on. And um, what I'm really excited about that is Ben and I talked about a lot of topics and we have over the years. What we're going to talk about specifically is uh, is a personal topic, and that's really the topic of partnership and how you can, you know, what does it look like? Is it pros and cons of having a business partner? What do you look for? Is there a framework for that? And and what a topic that's near and dear to my heart is the, the concept of intrapreneurship as opposed to entrepreneurship. And I'm going to challenge your way of thinking a little bit. I'm going to tell you that a lot of you guys who think you're thriving in entrepreneurship, might want to consider intrapreneurship like I did. So provocative, I know. Anyway, uh, I like to be provocative and controversial, but I never really am. I think I am. Doesn't really ever work. So welcome. Uh, I've got two incredible guests, uh, David Mayo Williams, right? David, and you're in the um, Chester County in the Philly suburbs. Did I get that right? You did. I, I got it right. And, and here's what happened, David. Um, I've, I've known you and Matt uh, for a while, and we have a ton of mutual friends. And I saw a post, Matt was glowingly, you know, singing your praises that you had a $12 million month last month, right? Yeah. So I, I messaged you in about 0.5 seconds, and I said, how'd you do it? Would you come talk to everybody about it? And you graciously said, well, thank you for being here. So we're going to kind of do this. We're going to go through, you know, your secrets of success. And one of my favorite people um, uh, is Jordan Davis out of the Dallas-Fort Worth area. I, I adore Jordan, and she she uh, is the rainmaker of one of our place network teams. And I said, Jordan, who do you have that's been killing it for the last 30 to 60 days? And she started telling me the story of, of Amanda Benoit, who we have here today. And Amanda, you and I had a, a phenomenal call. So impressed with you. And, and you're just going to tell us everything you know and you've been doing. And I think what's interesting for you is going from, what did you do last year? You're going to do 60 units this year. You did 36 last year. Is that right? Yeah, that's almost correct. Double. Yeah, you're going to almost double this year. So mm -hmm. welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> let's, uh, let's, well, I kind of want to start with um, I kind of want to start with mindset. I think we should start with mindset. So I, I do want to get into tactics, but both of you guys struck me on our prep calls that that each of you kind of had a some, some interesting mindset shifts. David, do you want to talk to us a little bit about your three words um, entering 2021? I'm just really transfixed by that story and kind of how you shifted your mindset this year. Yeah, I um, so I thankfully found those words uh, since our conversation, which is great. Um, uh, but I've had I've had a great coach for probably six or seven years now, and um, our relationship has evolved quite a bit from uh, from a business coach to a mindset coach to a you know more about life in general. And um, I think at the end of last year, he said, you know, one of the exercises he had me do is point out three adjectives that describe my year. And I, I said it was focused, it was fast, and it was frantic. So, um, and he said, how do you feel about those? And I said, well, focused is good. Fast can get exhausting if you do it for an extended period of time. And frantic just doesn't ever work. So I said to him, I said, I really want to change that this year. 
And he said, okay, so how do you want to change it? And we went into three other words. And those three words were um, motivational, effective, and joyful. So I, I've been focusing on those three words this year as, as far as e daily, even just making sure that um, if I wake up in a bad mood or I didn't get a good night's sleep, I don't continue that thought for my entire day. So I, I shift to something more joyful and try to shift my mindset into something that makes me happy versus the fact that I didn't get sleep. And then the motivational aspect is really more meant to be for everybody around me. Like, what am I doing to be motivational for everybody else? Uh, you, know, you can't give people motivation, but you can be, you can inspire people. So my goal was to be inspire people. And then, um, and then after that, the whole effective thing was to counteract the whole frantic thing because um, even though you're focused and if you're frantic, you're not as effective as you would be if you're calm. So those yeah. three words helped me really be a little bit more productive this year. Isn't it interesting that, that you're here on a webinar and one of your words is motivational? It's, it's fascinating that really what, what you focus on expands, isn't it? Yeah. It's interesting. It not, really not does, much. without a doubt. Yeah. So David, I want to let's stay with you a bit, and then we'll go back to um, to Amanda. You've been in real estate for ten years. Is that give or take? Eleven, yeah. Eleven, 11 yep. years. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I like your trajectory because you started off. You went straight onto a team, by the way, which we're going to dive into a little later. But you you were a buyer's agent when you first started, right? Yes. Last year, how many homes did you sell, and what percentage were buyers, and what percentage? Last year, 66 transactions, and out of the 66, 24 were sellers, and what's the math? 42 were buyers. Okay. This year, it, you know, you don't quite know, but how many houses do you think you still sell, and what percentage do you think you sell? My goal is 72, and the original goal was 42 buyers and 30 listings, just because I thought I would stay on the same buyer trajectory, and then I realized realized that, and decided, I guess, that I wanted to focus more energy on listings because it was not only more productive for me, uh, but more productive for the team. Um, I, I honestly think I've, I've re-looked at the numbers since we spoke, and I, I think it's going to be closer to 50-50 this year. I mean, I think it's going to be split right down the middle because I've really shifted my whole mindset to listings. Ah, well, that's what you just said it. So you shifted your mindset towards listing and then the actions followed it. We're going to dive into some of those actions in a minute, but that's what I want to do. Isn't it? It's just fascinating how you just made a decision and then, then the actions follow that. Well, and, and I don't want to get too deep into this because I feel like we're going to run out of time, but it, there, there is a really magical sort of mystical thing that happens when you do have this focused mindset and when you put, and, and you, and you just, you set the intention and it happens. And, and it's crazy because, and I'm bringing this up only because um, I've been on a little bit of a streak where I've had, and for us, our average sale price is somewhere between probably 350 and 400,000. And I've been on this streak of million dollar listings. And I don't know why. And Matt said to me the other night, um, he said, well, he goes, look at you, you're on, you have all these million dollar listings that you're doing. And he said, you're creating, you know, quite a, a, a trend. And I'm like, well, I don't know if it's a trend, but I mean, I like it. It's good. I just, I don't know how long it's going to continue. And then last night, that was two nights ago. Last night, I got a call from my current listing that just went under contract in three days. And it was a seller who said, I noticed your listing is right around the corner from my house, went under contract in three days. I want you to list our house. Mm -hmm. And it's another million dollar listing. And so I just... I certainly didn't do any work to get that except for the work into the listing that I had, but it's just sort of like, I put it out there in my mind that I was going to get more. And like, I don't know where they're going to come from, but they were going to happen. And it sounds goofy, but it works. No, you just have to think that way. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, David, million dollar sellers refer and attract million dollar sellers, $200,000 buyers refer and attract $200,000 buyers. And so so what, what, what happens is, is, is you start replicating more of, of what you're doing, right? 
and it start it started with you anyway with a mindset. I would also argue it's like I teach a lot about getting into luxury about you can be smart about it and start really leveraging and capitalizing on those sales and helping the process to come right. But um, good job, way to go. That that's awesome. Thanks, Amanda. <laughs> I love your story, by the way. Do you, actually, do you want to walk us through your first couple of years of real estate? It's just such a compelling story because, you know, kind of where you went from year one to this year is really inspirational. Sure, sure. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. And uh, at the very end of 2017, I decided to take a big leap of faith and go into real estate full time. I've always uh, done real estate, but had a job in conjunction with it, typically uh, property management. So, I saw an ad on Indeed for a buyer agent position with the Davis team and I applied and I met with Jordan directly um, and then I fought tooth and nail to join the Davis team after that, called, emailed, texted, showed up at the office till they said, yeah, we'll, we'll bring you on the team. Uh, so I joined the team in January of 2018 with really no sphere of my own. Um, I'm not originally from Texas. I never really focused heavily on real estate before. So I really had to uh, deep dive into lead generation and our primary uh, lead generation at that time was open houses. So I did a ton of open houses, sometimes four or five in a week. And it took me a long time, but uh, after four months on the team, I finally had my first closing. And then it just kind of snowballed from there. I ended up at the end of 2018 closing 17 deals. And so um, in 2019. It's a tremendous year, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Really quick. Here's what I just want to pull out of that. It's a very, very typical uh, pattern that I see, certainly with agents on my team and in Mm -hmm. my world, where you started in January, your first closing was in April. So uh, my, the average first closing on my team is 111 days. So it's really in alignment with that. And then what mm-hmm. I find amount is that they sell one a month, months four, five, and six, and then it goes to, you know, one and a half to two plus a month after that. So the fact that, that you got 17 homes and didn't sell a house till April, it's not unusual to me, but I wanted you to highlight it because it might be an aha to some of the agents watching like, oh, it works that way, right? It's kind of a, we call it a hockey stick, don't we? Kind of a cumulative. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. What you're doing now, you'll see in the next 90 days. And so um, when I joined the team um, and we would have our meetings on Tuesdays, one of the things that Matt Davis would say, which is Jordan's husband, is be in love with the activity. And I actually type that out in big red letters and I put it above my desk. Be be in love with the activity. Oh, be in love with the activity. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I put that above my desk and I focused on that every single week, every single day. And I just made lead generation my one thing and slowly built my pipeline and uh, kept at it with open houses. Um, I ended up closing 27 my second year, so in 2019. And uh, last year, 2020, um, in the middle of a pandemic, I closed 36, which was amazing. Yeah, incredible. And and then what are you on practice all this year? We're on track to close 60 this year. Okay, so this is why you're both here. You can see, you know, um, you're, you guys, that you, you're both, you both took a big leap between 2020 and 2021, and that's what struck me. And that's kind of what I want to drill down on today, right? And I just wanted all of our, all of our viewers to kind of understand that. So let's dive into mindset, Amanda. What changed, and, and I, I'm going to cheat and tell you, I love the story you told me about Jordan ignoring you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So um, I made my first hire uh, for a showing partner following the place opportunity model um, and hired my a friend of mine uh, right after family reunion in 2020. And it didn't work out. Um, he, you know, it was a pandemic. Things weren't going spectacularly well for us at that time. And so uh, he he opted out and I went into Jordan's office and I said, that's it. I'm going to cut my goals back. I just want to focus on what I feel like I can handle. I don't need an assistant. It's just going to be me, myself and I, and it'll be great. And she said, okay, great. 
let's do that. And then the next week, uh, she told me, hey, I had a great conversation with Caitlin. I think you should talk to her about possibly partnering with you. I said, Jordan, remember our conversation? Yeah, I know. But let's go ahead and meet with her anyway. And I ended up hiring her on the spot. And we're coming up on our year anniversary next month. (laughs) And she is my showing partner. (laughs) It's a really good story, right? Right. The Jordan wonderful listens thing about her rainmaker. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. I mean, that, you know, I don't want to skip ahead, but that right there is a great example of why being on a team is great. You've got this, this mentor, coach, leader who knows you so well, and they get to do that. They get to just mm-hmm. smile and ignore you. <laughs> they Absolutely. Know- Absolutely. So... Yeah, it's been really great. 2021, the beginning was rough. Um, And I had now my showing partner for the first time. I had somebody that I had felt like I had to provide opportunities for. And I struggled, but I kept up with the Legion. I kept, you know, making calls. I don't know if you guys heard of a little term called Snowmageddon that hit Dallas Fort Worth and we were all trapped in our houses for seven days. Oh, yeah. um, and I was on the phone every single day in my house, me and my son and my dogs. And we, and I, I did not let up in my lead generation. No, there was no excuse not to get on the phone and make calls. And, and we, we suffered in the first quarter and we're, we've made it up and then some in the second quarter and still on track for our goal of 60 this year. So I'm very proud of our, of our drive to keep going. What, what, what are the blessings and the curse of having really good talent in your world? Cause you kind of hit on it. Yeah. So uh, the blessing is that I have somebody who I can rely on to get the job done. No matter what she is extremely talented and extremely dedicated and loyal. Um, and then the big fear of mine is what's next for me. I feel like you hire talent, then you have to get out of talent's way. Right. And so I'm working on kind of like what David said, focusing my mindset on uh, listings because I've I also started the team as a buyer's agent and um, am working really, really hard to become a, uh, sorry, do I have something else running in the background? I don't know, you're really glitchy. And so I was just um, saying that you might want to shut down some progress. Keep going, keep going. Okay, sorry. Um, so yeah, I think that that one of the the things is that you feel like you need to get out of talent's way, and so you really want to focus on what's the next step for you. Is that you know coaching for me, and for me, it's been like focusing on listings and potentially maybe later on down the road coaching, you know, things like that, and making that next step for my personal growth in, in this business. Yeah, I, I think talent pushes you in good and bad ways. Like they make it more fun. They make you feel like you want to, um, you know, you want to provide for them. You want to give them the opportunity. And it's also, you know, no greater accountability than knowing that you're responsible for someone's livelihood, right? So it can go, it can kind of go both ways. Um, David, what's your main or what are your main sources of business? Uh, ask clients. Past clients. I mean, yeah. past clients well, and referrals from past clients. So that is it. right now, it's it. it's got to be 75% of my business. Yeah, yeah. Well, and then obviously, obviously you're getting what we call LFL, leads from listings, because you just got that call yesterday from that. Right. Are you doing any circle prospecting or any postcards or anything right now around those? Um, well, our team, you know, we've got a, a pretty mature team. So we've got an internal sales group that does a lot of the calls. I, I have to be honest, and I... I this is where I get myself in trouble. And I warned you about this is that I do not do a ton of lead generation. I know it's, you're not allowed to say that, but you are. I, I don't, I mean, I just, I'm constantly fed by my database. And so I find myself, you know, I set plenty of appointments every year. I mean, most of my, most of my deals are all appointments that I set for myself. So, you know, um, I, I'm lucky in that, that I've got that kind of database to work from. So Does but, your, what does your team do for your database? Do they email? Do they call them for you? What do they do to kind of support that? If, or team, I mean, my entire data, database gets touched by you know, the team events, you know, newsletters and things like that. So they're all, um, I would say most of them are engaged in our social media and, um, 
you know, I'm generally one of the first agents we go to when we're talking about an event that we want to do for past clients. So I feel like my, my database is very much loved on by the team in a lot of ways. You know, they are our internal sales group. They, they make phone calls every single day, all day. And they're doing all sorts of things like either calling particular neighborhoods that I want to prospect because I've got a client that wants to be in that neighborhood or, you know, calling to announce a new listing or just calling to talk about a fundraiser we're doing. So, um, you know, I, I do make phone calls. So I'm not going to say that I don't lead generate. I just don't have the same type of lead generation, the discipline lead generation that I used to do in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, How many people are in your database? Supportive of everything I do. Like if I say I want to put a postcard out for a neighborhood, you know, the team will be happy to do that. But then we talk about how to prolong that. So it's not just one first postcard. It's a series. Like I said, okay, how do we build this for the team? You know, Mm -hmm. so the team keeps me in check uh, in the sense that they are doing things the right way versus the impulsive way that I shoot things out there because of immediate success that I'm having. So it's really... It, it's amazing to me to think, and, and a lot of agents will say, well, I've got a really great business. I'm going to go out on my own. And I have never thought that because I realize the value of which everybody around me adds to my existence. Like I would never, I mean, I really, I don't think I could do what I do without everybody around me, without Rachel, without Matt, without every other agent on this team who will volunteer to do an open house at my listing and, and, I, I just, there's so much value in that. Yeah. How many people are in your database? Would you say yours? I mean, my personal database, your personal, uh, I would probably say somewhere between 1500 and 2000. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Okay. Okay. Uh, Amanda, because what are your I, primary sources of business? I know you've kind of shifted a little bit. I have. Um, originally, it was open houses, um, but when the listing well dried up at the beginning of 2021, I really shifted my focus more to calls and uh, and lead generating through brevity and uh, and time blocking uh, to to make that my one thing. I've never did that before as far as lead generation goes. I didn't have call time previously, and so this year now every Wednesday. I stay at home, which is my own personal bunker because I'm by myself (laughs) and I'm on the phone from 9 a.m. to typically 4.35 p.m. Um, Just calling through my database, calling uh, new leads and follow up everything, uh, past clients. Uh, That's how I uh, have been shifting during this market. So I think you said um, you were talking to past clients, new leads, and just kind of getting caught up with your lead gen on, on those Wednesdays, mm-hmm. which we're interrupting, obviously, because it's Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Um, well, you, you, you just answered one of my questions, which is I was going to ask you both, you know, what are the habits that you guys have established that, that might be new? Because you're, you're both going to have this huge leap from 20 20 to 2021. So I, I want to dive into that. So is this one of the habits that you've changed this Wednesday, you on the phone lead gen day? Amanda. So the question was, what is that other habits? That is I've this developed? a new habit? Oh, new habit. Yeah. Well, yes. first of all, first, yeah. When did you start this? I started this probably February, March. Somewhere oh, so around it's there. It's a really new habit. It's a very new habit. Yeah. Um, I tried to do more call time here at the office, sitting with our ISA or sitting in my office. And so, uh, and only doing it, you know, in the mornings, kind of like nine to noon. And it just seemed like all the interruptions of of everything were, were coming in and, and disrupting that call time. So that's why I switched to doing it from home. And so now my assistant, Caitlin, knows that she's showing those days, she's handling all the phone calls, the emails, you know, and that's I'm, so that I can focus on what I need to focus on for that day. I'm still doing calls and follow-ups through the week, but I just know I have that one dedicated day where I can focus on my one thing and really knock it out of the park. I typically will make between 30 and 40 connects that day. And, and they're, they're not all new. Some of those are follow-up. That's correct. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's great. Um, I have 
pretty much stayed in contact with anyone and everyone that I could the entire time I've been on the team. So a lot of times, like I said, an appointment today for somebody that I was in contact with last year. So follow up's been a really big thing for my business because, you know, they say when somebody looks into, you know, whether they go to an open house or click on something online, they're actually about six months out from purchasing. Mm -hmm. So I try to stay on top of that through brevity tasks and follow up and really uh, make sure that I'm top of mind. Yeah, and, and that's a great illustration, isn't it, of how uh, com lead conversion is cumulative, right? Mm -hmm. It goes up over time. So I want everyone here to hear that. If you're, if you're feeling discouraged, if, if you're watching this and you're like, I'm doing the activities, I'm doing the activities. Um, it sounds like um, Matt says something similar to me, which is you fall in love with the process, not the outcome. The score will take care of itself if you just keep focusing on the activity and the process, right? Yeah. And so uh, it's easy to just get caught up in, you know, I'm not seeing results. I'm not seeing results. You will, you will Absolutely. see them if you're doing the work. And, and like good. David said, you see them in different ways. Like yeah. for instance, if I was in the beginning outdoor knocking my neighborhood, inevitably my phone would ring and it would be, you know, so it would be somebody talking about wanting to buy a house. So I never, never got anything maybe from the door knocking. It came back to me in different ways. We call that lead gen karma around the Davis team. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I'd like to add something that what Amanda was saying is that um, it is about the follow up. It, it, it just it's and I know it, it sounds so elementary, but it's true. I mean, I, some of the proudest clients that I've represented are the ones that I've nurtured for seven years. Like, I love that. I love when I can say I worked with that client for seven years and now they bought a farm. They, you know, but, and, but it's that consistent touching you know, them, that, it's staying in contact that, that really turns into, I always call them um, like bonus buyers or bonus sellers. That they, one, one month they'll suddenly show up and then they'll be closing and it's great. And, and I just think every relationship that you, you get into or you have the opportunity to get into could lead you to another business and, and, or another opportunity like that. Yeah. You have to be able to edit out the ones that obviously aren't going to engage. And sometimes I have a tendency to hook onto them and de I'm determined to convert them. But those aren't always your best use of time because that determination and that, that challenge to convert might not even result in anything more. So you know, sometimes you have to let those go, but you do have to be persistent and on top of people and just stay in contact for the long haul. Was it Groucho Marx? Someone said, I prepared for this overnight success for years. Yes, I think, right? I think it is. Yep. Bonus karma, call it what you want. It, it all <laughs> stems from past activities, right? It all stems from past activities. Speaking of which, um, David, what what have you really done? I really want to dive down into the weeds now. Last 60, 90, 120 days. Okay, we're into 2021. We're seeing the fruit. Certainly May was the fruits of what you started, you know, back whenever you started January or whatever. Let's kind of dive into, you kind of went through this mindset shift, which I love. I think you should tell a story where you're like, look, I want more listings. And then what did you do? It's one thing to say, okay, I want more listings, but then what were your actions and your activities, you know, behind that? Um, I think that, you know, for the first four months of the year or so, or first three months of the year, for three or four months, I, I kind of just did the, oh yeah, I want more listings. I'm going to do more listings. And I did that. And then suddenly in, I guess it was really May, it was the end of April or May that I just finally said, okay, I'm tired of saying this, let's actually do it. And let's get this done. And I had to talk with my coach and he said, this is what we're going to do. How many are you going to get this month? And I said, four and I ended up getting five. But then suddenly by the end of May, my pipeline was a dozen of people that I know are going to list in the next three months. So I, I suddenly had this massive pipeline of listings and it just, and it was just a simple mindset shift. It was just, okay, where do I go with this? Where do, where do I go? So I went, you know, to all the people that I'd ever spoken to about listing and no matter where they were. And I just made sure I touched base with them. And then I went back to my past clients who I thought, who bought a house with me that would potentially need to move? So I started calling all those people. And so it was a really easy phone list at first. And then it became a little more challenging because okay, where do you go from there? And I've never really done a lot of script practice for converting expireds or FISBOs or anything like that. So I, I didn't go that route because I just, I didn't have the skill set to do that. I knew the, 
buzzwords and I knew the things to say, but it's just not what I wanted to do. So at, at that point, I just shifted into dump everything I can into the listings that I've got and talk about them and just start blasting that out. And I think because everybody who had worked with me knew me as a buyer's agent. So I think that they, it was my responsibility for changing the perception of who I was. So suddenly I started focusing on my Facebook posts and things about the listing. This is what I got. We're like, oh, you're doing listings now? I said, yes. So I would talk about that. And so that I think really cemented everything. Okay, let's, let's role play. I'm a past client. Um, you love me. We have a good relationship. Maybe you haven't talked to me in a while, but, but you know, we're good. And, and you've got this new mindset. What might you say? You know, hey, David, how are you? Thanks for the call. Oh, it's so nice to hear from you or so nice to talk to you. Um, how are things going? Good. Everything's great. How about you? All right. How did you make it through last year? Yeah, we're good. You know, we're thriving and a lot to be blessed about. So what about you? Same thing. It's been a, it was a busy year last year. It wasn't without its challenges, but, you know, it overall went really, really well. Just required a different you know, focus and, 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 and different attention to what I'm doing. So, um, so how, how's everything in your house? Or it, how did you make it through being, did you work from home? Yeah, it was tough. You know, we're, we're probably a room short, to be honest, that, that became, you know, painfully clear. <laughs> and have you considered looking into moving someplace different? You should call. Uh, yeah, I mean, kind of. I, I know it's a little crazy, but I have found myself looking online a little bit, actually. Well, Not sure. Well, are yeah. you, have, have, has anybody talked to you about the current market values and, and where they are now? No, we haven't gotten that far. I think it'd be interesting for you to know what your home is valued at currently. Because okay. you're you're in a neighborhood that is really highly sought after, and, and homes in your neighborhood are lasting even single digits on the day on the market. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I kind of would love to know, but I would hate to put you to trouble because we're just. I mean, I wouldn't even say we're as far as thinking about it. I mean, kind of thinking about it, but I just don't want you to waste your time. So I'd feel bad having you do that, but I would kind of like to know. Well. You know, you've worked with me long enough to know that I'm about the relationship. I'm not about the time invested. I'm always happy to do that. It's it's really important to me to help you make good, educated decisions about, you know, your personal goals. All right. Okay. Yeah. I'm not. I'd be curious to know. <laughs> you didn't you didn't prep me for the role play thing. <laughs> Caught me off well, guard. I mean, you were, that, that, that actually is uh, perfect. I mean, that, I think for everyone watching, that is perfect. That's how it goes. You know, it's just a conversation like that. And then I'm assuming you just kind of close it up and just say, great, you know, I'll, I'll uh, get you whatever you're going to get you, right? Because you've seen the house before. Yeah. What, what would you normally deliver in that case? Would you go to visit them? Would you schedule an appointment? Would you send them something? I would, you know, I, it's funny. If I, I guess I, I wasn't... <laughs> I would talk to them about what they've done in the house. So I would, I would find out sort of exciting things that they've done. And I guess I'm thinking of the Kellys right now, which are clients of mine that I've been somewhat pursuing because I knew they were going to want to move. And, and so they were talking about all the things they had done to the house and they got such a good deal on the house that they bought in the, in the school district that they're in that I knew their equity would just be mind blowing. So yeah. Um, I did schedule a time to go visit them because I, they wanted to show off the things that they did. So in the midst of the conversation, it became, I was like, well, you got to come over and you got to take a look. And so that was the, they invited me, which was nice. Yeah. And then yeah. we had that conversation and now they're actively in the market looking to where they're going to move. And thankfully, so they from the big, the from... Buy, so they... <laughs> gonna... Oh, that's perfect. Oh, God. Yes. Um, from from the initial conversation to listing their home, how much time had elapsed? Um, I would say about two or three months. Okay, yeah, that's perfect. That, we always say ninety days out. That that's great. Yeah. That's perfect. Thank you for. I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but that's all right. There you go. It's good Amanda. For me. Yeah, Amanda, I want to hop to you. The last like 60, 90, kind of 120 days, walk us through your activities and what you've done, especially what, you, what you've what you done that's different and effective, right? 
Yeah, so something that I have started implementing um, in my Wednesday calls is a pond dive. So uh, we have kind of our leads that have been unresponsive that the team Mm -hmm. all puts into the pond. And uh, so I put those into a dialer and I just take an hour a week and I call through and just ask them to start the conversation with, hey, in the past, you've either visited our website or visited one of our open houses. Tell me how your home search is going, you know, and just kind of keep it kind of vague and open ended and let them do the talking. And uh, it's been pretty successful. I signed some new buyers uh, this past week through the Pond Dive and uh, picked up a listing as well that we closed in April. So oh, it's wow. been really, really good use of my time to kind of go through and and see who we haven't maybe been touching base with as much as we should mm-hmm. and get them back on track to purchase or sell or whatever it is that their goal is. What what might it, what's a typical response? I'm curious, or a couple typical responses. Sure. I get a lot of like, oh, you know, we were, we're on hold. We put that on hold and I'm like, great, you know, tell me more about why it's on hold. And typically the conversation is, you know, this market, Um, we tried, we made offers, things didn't go as according to plan. And so I kind of just deep dive into, you know, what, what, who was your lender and how did things go with your lender? And, and just kind of ask those questions, you know, what, where were you looking at you guys, you know, what kind of offers were you making if they were working with another agent at the time, you know, just things like that. Um, A lot of times I find that they weren't really actively looking. They just saw, maybe they were set up on an MLS search and saw, okay, that house was on the market today. Now it's gone tomorrow. I'm out. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. it's just setting the buyer consultation from there and uh, and talking them through the process. It's not as scary as you think it is. You know, maybe you don't need as much money as you think you need to buy. Um, and maybe I can get you uh, get you under contract with not having to spend all the money that you have in your savings, you know, just things like that, that I just try and set that appointment um, so that I can get in front of them and, and get them to uh, to sign with me. Yeah, that's great. Mm-hmm. What other activities have you kind of focused on? I love that. The pond dive. That's a new one yeah. for me. What other activities have you focused on? Um, working a lot with my sphere. Um, I have an amazing sphere that I've developed since I've been on the Davis team and just keeping in touch with them more, making them a priority, always asking them when I uh, either call or text them, who do you guys know who's looking to buy, sell or invest in real estate and trying to get more business through my sphere is something that I've been uh, focusing on a lot this year as well. Yeah, that's awesome. So sphere, um, uh, privity for all of you, it's just a CRM, uh, internet leads is what you mean by that. Anything mm-hmm. else, any other um, big sources or big areas of focus that you've focused on? Um, also with my, um, with us- utilizing brevity for my open house leads as well. So we've used COVID and, oh, you know, now I sign them in myself on my computer right then and there. And we put them in what I call the crock pot. So as soon as they're signed in, they're getting e- email from me, you know, an hour later, they're getting a text from me. And so all of this is happening from me, but it's not me. Right. And so by the right. time I get home, I've got a laundry list of people that I need to touch base with and follow up with. And so that's been really helpful is using that crock pot, as I call it, because it's cooking, you know, I'm, I'm cooking dinner, but I'm really not. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm following up with people, I'm touching base with people, but I'm really not. And that's been a huge, a huge thing for me too this, this year with my open houses. That's awesome. How many people are in your sphere or in your personal database, I would say? Sure. I have about 600 in my personal database right now. About 600. And you're on your four, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're on your four of real estate. Of this, and, and then David, you're on your 11 and you've got 1500 to 2000. And that's, that's what it is. You guys, you build it. I mean, that, that's about right. That, that's great. That's perfect. Um, let's dive into, I, I think it's interesting. It wasn't on purpose, but I think what's interesting is I was looking for people who have had success, right? Especially this year versus last year, and especially over the last few months, because I am sensing the market starting to do a little shift to Rama. Um, and, and both of you guys have been longtime members of teams. And, and I, I kind of thought it'd be interesting to dive into that a little bit, you know, What is it like being on a team and why do you guys stay? Why do you like it this much? 
either one of you, whoever feels called to answer. Um, I'll go, I'll go first. Um, I think that the biggest benefit of being on a team is the culture, um, especially our culture here at the Davis team, the I'll support you, you support me. Hey, let's uh, work together. I'm out of town. So, you know, you're able to actually uh, laugh together, cry together, all the things, right? Because like real estate is hard sometimes. Um, and it's great to have other people that you can go, hey, you know, that's going to be okay. And they'll do the same for you. So I think the Davis team culture is a really big reason why I've joined and I'm sticking around forever. <laughs> yeah. Aw. What about you, David? You mentioned uh, it earlier, but yeah, the, the same thing. I mean, I it, it, the culture is key. Um, I would say that most of the people who join our team end up being part of our, you know, family. In a sense, you know, we have people over to the house and we you know, travel with people, and it just it it just it's a it's a very very um, give and take environment. And I think that for me. It's funny, I think some people are inherently givers and some people are inherently takers and not takers in a bad way, but I think there's people that need the input from other people. And then there's people that like to give the input to other people. And so I think I'm definitely one of those people who I love to be in the office and help somebody solve a problem. Like there's just nothing better for me than to be able to talk to somebody and help them sort through it. Like I just, I love that. And I love that for my clients too, which I think is why I really, I connect with my clients a lot because it's really about me just helping them solve a problem. And, mm -hmm. uh, but the, the team is, um, I mean, it's just so much value that is in the team that I, I think our biggest, our biggest fault is we don't flaunt that value that the team offers, you know? So I think a lot of agents don't get it. They feel it when they're here, but they don't understand. Um, mm -hmm. but our, definitely our culture is, is terrific. And, um, and that is the number one reason I, why I stay. Do you think every agent should be on a team, either of you? Is it, is it perfect for every agent? Real question, by the way. I don't think it's perfect for every agent, but I think the majority of agents would benefit from a team. Especially, I mean, I, I think our team allows you the flexibility to do your business the way you want to. So very much the way Keller Williams allows an agent to do the business they want to do it. Mm -hmm. Our team is the same way. So that's why I think that for me, I mean, I, I've really had the ability to be, build my own little team within our team. So, I mean, at this point, I'm somewhat of, I uh, mean, yes, I'm a member of the team, but I'm also doing my own thing. I mean, I'm really, mm -hmm. I've, I've got my business and I just go. Yeah, for sure. But I don't think it's right for every agent. I think there's some agents that are really good at being an independent, like I'll just wear every hat and, and that's fine, you know? But I think the majority of agents would benefit, especially at the start, from a team. And then once they're on it, they probably yeah. realize that, you know, why would they leave? Unless they're a high D, then they go. Yeah, why would they be otherwise? Amanda, what are your thoughts on that? I'm curious. I agree. I think that it's, it maybe not be, it wouldn't be for everyone, but I think it's something that, especially if you're a new agent, you should, you should go visit a team or give it a shot because I think the culture and the leverage that you get with a team is, I mean, that's the number one reason why I joined. I worked for an individual agent as her uh, executive assistant when I started in real estate. And I thought, oh my gosh, I could just focus on this one thing and I don't have to worry about, open house scheduling and, um, you know, uh, I don't have to worry about sign calls and I don't have to worry about all these other things that go into it that you don't really think about who's putting the lockbox on the door. I don't know. Cause I don't do it, but the admin team handles that. That's awesome. There's all these That's little so aspects great. of it that you just don't think about when you're an individual agent, it's on you to do, right. Yeah. It's on you to handle all those little things that I just, love the fact that I get to come in and I get to focus on my 20%. I've totally latched on to the 2080 thing and I focus on my 20% as much as I possibly can and the team and then my little team within the team handles handles the rest and, and that's the key to success for me. It's really funny. Um, it's, it's really interesting because I didn't plan on kind of talking about teams when I invited you both on. I was just looking at your production, right? But what's interesting is in two weeks, um, Ben and I are gonna come talk about it. I always 
prided myself on being an entrepreneur, right? And I am thriving in my career, uh, working with a partner, being an entrepreneur. I didn't call it, like I did not call that, right? It is so much better together. And I found myself being this, you know, inadvertent, like, you know, spokesperson for teams now, because I, I, I had a real estate team and I was an individual agent, but now it, it's, I, I couldn't go back to being a Lone Ranger ever again. It's just, it's just, it's not even an option. So it's interesting. Uh, the other thing I, that, that strikes me is David. Mm -hmm. You said something really interesting. And, and you said earlier, you go, you know, this is why it's hard because I don't lead Jen. Remember when you said that? I don't lead Jen and, you know, I don't know, you know, I, I, I know I'm not supposed to say that. Remember when you said that? Mm -hmm. I think what struck me about that is that that's just not true. The entity has to lead Jen. You don't. So the lead Jen has to be done. Yes. You, David, don't have to do it. You have a model that is kind of, you know, works with you, right? And that's mm -hmm. part of why you have a team is you can kind of each have your lanes that you stay in. Right. right. You know, anyway, that just kind of, that kind of struck with me. But let's stay on you uh, for a minute, David. You have what you termed a team within a team. And I know quite a few of these now, right? What does that look like? What's a team within a team? Uh, well, it started out with, you know, having showing agents. Um, so I had, I had up to three showing agents at one point, and that was, um, uh, like Amanda referenced earlier, it's a little bit, uh, stressful because you do feel like you've got to take care of these people and provide for these people. And so if you're not, um, if you're not in the zone and, and providing the, the leads for them, it's, it's not necessarily fair. So, uh, I currently have, um, I sort of have half of a showing agent, which is kind of, um, interesting, but uh, well, I've got two halves of a showing agent. So I guess I've got well, a I, I actually now. think that works. So, I, I think that works. I understand it. Yeah. So, um, but I'm, I'm working on building out uh, two more agents that are going to be showing agents for me so that I can sort of bulk back up the, uh, the buyer side. But, and right now I've got a, a administrative assistant that is working specifically for me. And she not only helps with my real estate business, but um, our Airbnbs that we've got that we manage and some other projects that we know we work on. So she helps me with all that. Um, so that's currently what that looks like yeah. at the moment. Okay. What about you, Amanda? You're kind of, you're getting there too, a team within a team, absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Um, like I said, me and Caitlin have been partners for almost a year now. And uh I pretty much she handles the bulk of the showings she writes the offers you know we kind of just um, have our different roles that combine to make one buyer's agent and then I just hired about 30 days ago our first admin for both just me and Caitlin and so we've been working on training her and um, and getting her up and going as well it's been great she is actually I found out that we graduated from the same university and we were there at the same time we had kids on the same day so <laughs> it's been really great to uh, to see my little team within a team finally come together and my my dream of having a life where I could, I went out of town last weekend and I did not one thing real estate related the whole weekend. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> so if you guys, um, David, we can start with you. If you guys, you know, if someone was watching and they were looking at joining a team, what would be like one, two or three things you would have them look for just based on your experience? Um, well, I'd look for the diversity of the team. So I'd look for, you know, how many agents are on their team, what departments are within the team. Um, what is your, if you're interested in doing listings, you know, what does the administrative side look like that? What's offered uh, for assistance with listings? Um, I would also ask, you know, do you have a sales manager on the team that is, you know, responsible for all the agents? You know, is you know, somebody holding agents accountable for production, for sales and things like that? Because I think that's a real accountability. If you're not open to accountability, then get out of the business. You know, I feel like that is just the number one. So if if the team is structured, they got that accountability. Um, and then I think the third thing I would ask about is uh, what does the team do every day? Like what what is what does a normal day look like? You know, we have a daily stand up, and then we have you know team meetings twice a month. We have like what does that team calendar look like? Uh, where I would engage with the team, and mm -hmm. you know, what do those events look like? 
Because I think yeah. that's the important part is, to me, the team is like having that interaction on a daily basis because it does sort of hold everybody accountable in a more group way versus one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, that, that's good. Good answer. What about you, Amanda? Yeah, I think that if you're looking at joining a team, you need to think about um, like what is the culture of the team? You know, um, what are the things that the team does to support each other? What kind of coaching is offered um, and things like that to help jumpstart your business? Like we have a uh, onboarding guide. We have weekly team meetings. We have weekly um, training sessions where we talk about all different topics plus the training offered through place and through the market center. And so I think that, um, especially if you're a new agent, uh, what are the opportunities there that you can jump right into and plug in so that you can uh, close your deal within the first, you know, 90 to 120 days. And also, like I said, the culture, like, do you feel like, you know, everybody is supportive, everybody um, gets along and that there's a good uh, relationship building going on within your team? So what I'm hearing both of you do is asking very specific questions. Mm -hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, whatever is important to you, it's asking specific questions. Alex Hayes asked that uh, question. I thought it was a really good one. So I thought it was worth asking. Thank you, Alex. Uh, last question. Okay. What advice would you guys have? You'd have phenomenal success. You're, you're, this is your chosen career. You know, you're in it, you're committed. Um, what advice do you have for agents that are just getting started? Maybe, maybe they've even been doing it a year or two, but nevertheless, they're, they're launching their career. They could be brand new, but, but they're, maybe they've done it. What advice would you have for them, Amanda? Um, I think that don't be afraid to try new things. Um, you know, go to different trainings, open up your mind to other avenues for lead generation and listen to those people who are really uh, nailing it and, and getting and being successful in that field. I think that's really important, especially when you're in a market like this market that we're in right now. I've never experienced and I've done real estate since 2011 and in two different states like I had to really shift my focus um, of other directions and you can't have that limited belief that nope, this is all I do and this is all I'm going to stay. I'm going to stay in my lane, like really open your mind up to other ideas and other possibilities of ways to get business and things like that. Mm, that's a good answer. That's great. What about you, David? Advice? Um, for me, I don't know if this applies to everybody, although I kind of feel like it should. I, you know, I come from a perspective of it's the servant heart concept that I, I really am here to serve my clients and just do what they need and 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 just be their best advocate. I mean, and it mm -hmm. sounds kind of canned and silly, but that's just sort of the perspective that I've got. And I just I, I every day am looking to um, I listen to them. You know what I mean? It's, uh, there's so many agents that I see that go out there and it's really more about them than it is their client. And I just, I think that hasn't, that would never work for me because I just, uh, to me, I want to make sure that my client's happy. So I think that's the number one thing. And then the number two thing is just be available and be in it, like just commit yourself to it. You know, I, I uh, in the beginning when people would call me and say, I'd like to get into real estate, but I want to do it part-time that was one thing in the beginning. Now I just say it doesn't work. So just don't, I mean, it just doesn't work. You're either in it full time or you're not like, just don't, you got to commit to it. Yeah. You gotta put the yeah. Time in. Great, great answer. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. You know, you took an hour out of your day and, and I don't take that lightly. I really appreciate you guys. And Amanda, you took an hour out of your big call day. So that's, you know, even extra amazing. So thank you guys. Uh, David Maya Williams, you are in Chester County in the Philly suburbs. How might people reach you if they want to give you a referral or talk to you? Uh, well, the easiest way to reach me and always way to find me is on Facebook. So just search all go. three names on Facebook. Um, I'm happy to share all my contact with, information with you uh, from that point. And it should be on Facebook anyway. Perfect. What about you, Amanda? Um, best way to reach me is my email, amanda at yourdavisteam.com. Perfect. Thank you, guys. And we will see all of you uh, next week with Mike McCann. Really excited about that. And in two weeks with, with Ben Kinney. So thank you guys all for joining us every single Wednesday. 
uh, either on Zoom or on the Pivot Shift Ahead page at noon Pacific time.